Hello everyone and welcome to this live stream about Flutterflow. Today we will talk more about how to build apps with Flutterflow. And yeah, today we also have a special guest with us, Abel Mengistu. Uh, welcome to this live stream. Thanks, Johannes. Thanks for having me. Yes. Great to be here. Basically the founder of Flutterflow. Today we look right now also at some questions ourselves um, that are common about Flutterflow. Now we can basically start with what is Flutterflow? So Abel, maybe you can like tell from your side what Flutterflow is. Yeah, so Flutterflow is a visual application development tool. So, so the easiest way to kind of describe it is, so it's a tool that helps you build applications, Flutter applications specifically um, quickly by leveraging a lot of building blocks that are already put in, already there for you, kind of pre-built. Um, and also generates the code for you so that if you, you know, if when you want to dig deeper or if you want to add customizations, uh, et cetera, you have the ability to do that. In short, that's what Flutterflow is. Yes. Uh, we later see also more in a demo about Flutterflow. Then let's go to the next question. When should we use Flutterflow? For whom it is like to use Flutterflow? When should they use it? When not? Is there like any things that you can tell about it? Yeah. So I'd say up until maybe, um, a couple of months ago, I'd say, you know, if you're building a new project that's a that has um, mobile apps, it's cross-platform. Um, and honestly, even if it was just specific to one platform, I'd say if, if you know, for mobile specifically, especially, Flutterful will give you an advantage to use it. Of course, I'm biased, but um, it's just you know, if I was going to start from scratch and build something, I just I believe it's the fastest way. To, mm -hmm. to get a mobile app developed. There's just not necessarily always the best option if you're only do, building a web app. But if you want cross-platform and mobile as a piece out of say use Flutterflow. And then of course there's a situation where if you already had an existing project where then it's hard to use Flutterflow because you're not going to start from scratch um, mm -hmm. rebuilding it. And Flutterflow is not easy to use if you already had an existing project. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. So whenever you build a mobile app, you can consider Flutterflow for your next project. Yeah, maybe you give like, first of all, like a quick demo about Flutterflow, how it works or like how you can get started as a beginner, maybe with Flutterflow also later for more advanced topics, but how to get basically started with Flutterflow. Yeah, sounds good. Can you see my screen? To do a demo of like an existing app, maybe it could be an interesting thing as well. It's mm -hmm. actually an app we just recently uh, launched on the app. So it's kind of show how quickly you can build in Flutterflow. So if I go back here, I'll bring up an app called Dream Brush. And I encourage people to try it out on the app store. If they, we basically wanted to, what happened, you know, we had the, there was the OpenAI Dev Day event that happened almost two weeks ago now. And um, what we wanted to do was we wanted to showcase how quick it is to be able to kind of leverage, you know, when things like this happen, if you have like a lot of awesome backend infrastructure that you've built, a lot of APIs that you want to expose and build an experience on top of it, you can do this really quickly. So this app is actually something what someone on our team built in a matter of, I believe it's like in a matter of, you know, maybe 40 to 50 hours, something like that, a few days. Um, and the idea for this page is, for this app is to be able to generate images. Uh, so AI generated images using DALI 3. That's OpenAI's um, image generation model. So you can have, you know, you, there's even like a paid, we just wanted to kind of showcase the full functionalities, right? So we have revenue cut integrated. Uh, so you have like paywalls, you can kind of blur stuff unless it's like a paying customer, you can explore the list of generated images from other users. There's an explore page. Um, there's the image generator page. Um, and there's the, basically, as you can see, there's a lot of different components for us that are used uh, th kind of throughout this app. Um, and I believe um, it could also be fun maybe to kind of start this in test mode and, and, and demo it on, on the web as well. Um, but just to kind of quickly show the type of functionality you can build within a, a matter of days. So in this case, Will, who's just extremely talented at Flutterflow, Build this very quickly it would have definitely taken me more than a couple of days to build this but it's you know definitely possible to have like relatively you know complex kind of functionality um working easily out of the box right and, th and this this features like a lot of animations for example if you go to this animations tab you can see it has um you can kind of pre set an animation and kind of preview it um it supports i think 60 languages because we wanted to show off like how easy it is to do um localization in Flutterflow, you basically come in here and add 
all of the languages you want to support. And what we did is we actually tried to find all of the languages where we have paying customers. So we actually have paying customers in over 150 countries, which is crazy. It was very exciting. We have used, uh, paying customers in over 150 countries. We tried to find all the languages that Google Translate supports in these countries, and we added it as a, as a language. So if I like go and pick this language, I don't know what this language is, but you know we support it in this app, right? And it was kind of very easy to do that out of the box because you literally just click this button, Google Translate, Translate All, which hits Google API. And literally in a matter of seconds, your app is now localized in all of these different languages. And here's all the different pages, all of the text in all these different pages is translated. Um, and so, and like even if, even if you had like left, right to left languages, right, like Arabic, for example, all of it, of course, would just automatically adjust. Um, yeah, uh, and we basically built this app to kind of quickly showcase the power of Flutterflow. If you you know for when when you people really master it, um, and if it's yeah, and this looks like it's actually started here, so I can do a quick demo of this app um, to show you guys. I can't take credit for this. Uh, Will built it uh, on our team, but it's still a kind of fantastic app. As you can see, here's like recent images. This is like actual images that people generated. Um, you can see there's blur hash. So, so using things like blur hash, um, so that you know the image while the image loads, you can kind of get a preview of what's coming. This is relatively simple to do, um, but you know, so you can kind of have that kind of complex functionality in Flutterflow, basically. So I, I, can, I can actually just do a quick image generation. Do we have a prompt suggestion from the viewers, maybe? Or do you, um, do you have a suggestion for? Um, I I have a classic one, which is based off my dog. Um, mm -hmm. I always you know, go for this um, Victorian era painting of a brown cockapoo. And I don't, I don't, uh, I guess you can make an impressionist style, you know, which is optional. And I'll hit generate image. And there's this kind of blurry animation that happens in the background. Um, that is actually one thing I want to quickly show off because especially for viewers of yours, who, you know, a lot of Flutter developers who already have existing apps. I think I, I mentioned that Flutterflow UI package, you know, things like this, like an animation that's kind of fading in and you know, scaling and et cetera, this like generating button. It's super easy to do in Flutterflow. Um, if you ask me to write it in Flutter, um, you know, I'd have to kind of look a lot of stuff up. And, and But it's super easy to do in Flutterflow. It makes it very easy to just kind of copy paste some existing functionality into your app, into your existing app without having to like uh, manually build up these animations, et cetera. So I'll just quickly demo that after this runs. Okay, so it's generating. Man, demos are just uh, <laughs> always the best. <laughs> yeah. As you can see from that list of images, there's so many that are generated, but I think it's detecting that this is demo mode. But let me go back to show the, show you the animations, maybe like I mentioned. So on the loading page, let's see what's happening here. So there's a couple of things going on. There's this container. So there's a blur widget on a container. So there's a stack. There's a blur widget on the container. Um, and then there's also a text. This is the generating text, right? If I I'm just going to refresh. My, there's something weird happening. Um, okay, go to loading page. Okay, now I'm, I can actually see the stuff that I'm selecting. Yeah, so if I go to this animation, I, as you can see, I have a loop animation that also does a reverse. And if I preview it, it just fades in and out. And that's looping. That's why in, in, in here you're seeing it loop back and forth. And that was just really easy to do, right? Let's actually just delete it. Let's delete this animation. All I have to do is hit add. I want a fade animation. I can preview what that fade looks like. Okay, maybe that's a little too fast because I want this to be almost like a heartbeat. So I'll set this to 1400 milliseconds. I want to reverse it and loop it. And that's basically it. So now I have something that just kind of like animates that way. And I can look at the generated code for this. If you look at this text, it says it's just a regular kind of aligned text widget that has some padding. It says animate on page load, and this is the text on page load animation. So if I just look at the code for this whole thing, there's you can see a map of different animations you have. So my text one will be this one. So it has a loop, reverse, right? So this is just kind of predefined for you. Very easy. You can kind of 
copy this animation map and then uh, set up this animation and just call it as opposed to having to like write that animation manually, right? Um, but this is, this is a simple example. You can do things like, I mean, if you want it to be fast, you can make it scale up as it also animates. Um, so like, let's make it scale up from like 0 0.5. Now, if we preview it, it will scale up and then it will go away, right? Like, so it has that kind of effect and super easy to do. So if you want to kind of play around with a lot of different animations, and of course you can like make it rotate left and right. I mean, I'm kind of going crazy here, but final turns. So, okay, so let's just be one full rotation. Let's, let's preview everything. Yeah, so like, it's just like rotating. I mean, this is this would be a very weird um, animation to, to add in this case, but kind of makes it easy to play around with a lot of ideas very quickly. And that's kind of our, you know, argument in a sense, when, you know, with building something like Flutterflow is that this quick, you know, visual iteration cycle leads to more um, productivity, right? Because you can kind of see it, you can, you're, you're like implementing ideas like as they come to your mind, as opposed to like, you have the idea now you need to figure out how to express it in, with some syntax. And then hopefully there's no, you haven't written a bug and then, and then you have to run it and try to see, did it work? Versus you can just kind of go in here and, and do it basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Is Flutterflow uh, suitable for larger projects? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um, that's one of the things you've been thinking a lot about. So we currently have users, actually. We have customers that are large enterprises. So we have, you know, because of confidentiality reasons, I'm not going to share explicitly who, but there are large banks, there's, you know, large telecoms that are using Flutterflow for kind of applications that they're developing. And in some cases, maybe it's a relatively simple app, but in some cases, it's a very, very complex app that has literally hundreds of pages. And that's one of the things actually we discovered working with some large, you know, when supporting some large enterprises building apps is that, man, and some of these kind of, you know, we have a lot of startups, a lot of freelancers, a lot of dev shops that are building on Flutterflow, but then we end up getting one of these like large customers, right? And their app was 300 plus pages. And it's, it's definitely not the kind of stuff that we had seen before, right? So it's kind of pushing the platform to the to the limit. And over the last six months, we've especially made a lot of improvements in that regard of like, because something that comes up is like even collaboration, right? If you have 50 people or 30 people working on one project, you can't all have be, you know, you maybe have several pages, sure, but you can't everybody be editing the same thing. You'll step on each other's toes, right? The thing for source management and being able to branch into different branches is like important. So we added things like branching functionality where you can kind of branch off. And so someone could just work on a feature in an isolated manner and then kind of merge it into the main branch. We don't have things like reviews yet, uh, but uh, I mean, of course, all of it is exported to Git uh, or to Git repository or you can export the code. So you could export the code and have separate branches that way. When you do create branches, you, it does, you can also push the separate branches, obviously. And you can kind of merge it in from there. But we do have relatively complex projects that are being built for like mission critical purposes, right? For example, for customer facing projects for a bank, uh, for digital mobile banking and and things like that, that's happening. Okay, that's great. That's great to hear for the users, I guess, who are using already Flutterflow. And another question is about state management. So, okay, we now know right now that providers support it, but is there also like a way to integrate other state managements or is it Yeah. So, I mean, our philosophy here is that we want, we want people to think about kind of the specific use cases and the flows and the product stuff that they face. Like, that, like that's what we optimize for. Let's say I'm building this type of functionality. Can I do it? We want to help them solve that. Exactly, you know, whether it's Riverpod or a provider, like if it's, as long as it solves it and it's like maintainable, you know, that's kind of what we prioritize. I think um, we, so basically let's say we kind of move from provider to Riverpod and that's kind of the nice thing about like on-demand code generation. What we try to do is we say, all right, we'll have all of these kind of out of the box functionalities and we'll try to implement it in a way that follows best practices. And now if something improves and we kind of update that on our code generation engine, and when you export your code, you just have the latest and more improved thing. And you're still thinking at the level of like, I want, you know, you're still thinking at this higher abstraction in a sense, right? Like I want these pages to interact this way. I want this action to trigger in this kind of way. Uh, I want this to happen when this happens. Maybe you have some custom code as well that's running. But if you've kind of put piece together all of these building blocks and then the generated source code, 
ideally is works really well for you based off of kind of the latest version of the code generation exam. An example I can give you is a common thing that happens that we see with with our with people using Flutterflow sometimes is that there's some downstream package and I think this happens probably a common Flutter thing, right? Like maybe there's some pub de dependency you dip, you have it's like downstream, some transitive dependency that changes. And if you haven't like locked your de version dependency, maybe you, you try to build and you have something that's broken. That's some com kind of something common we've noticed. And so with using something like Flutterflow, what happens is if somebody's build failed this way and we kind of detect it, we'll just make sure that, okay, there's some transitive de pub dev package, maybe that has like updated and is like, is not compatible with something now, we'll automatically kind of fix that on our end. So when the next user generates code, they don't even know that this issue is fixed for them, right? So kind of similarly, whether it's river pod or provider, we will try to set it up in a way that it works well and it's maintainable and then Ideally, it just works and users are happy. And they, they, you know, if you want to, you know, if you, if you're, you know, when you're building your applications, if you really care to use block versus X versus Y, pro probably Flutterflow is not a great fit because it sounds like you already have like strong interest in like using X or Y. But Flutterflow is more for like solving the problem of like whatever app you're building, not necessarily for like what framework you use for state management. You know, like the things you're optimizing for is helping you solve the problem basically. Not necessarily, but because it's very hard to do both. If you have, you can have some toggle of like use block or river pod or something. But then, if the functionality works, like why you know spend time for us to implement all these different things versus kind of making it smoother, um, making the generated code with whatever way it is um, consistent and maintainable versus supporting a lot of different styles almost in a sense. Because um, you can do a lot of like whether you use block or provider, you can solve a lot of these problems. It's just different style almost um and there's pros and cons to each but yes all right then i thank you very much that you showed us all the different features of flutterflow how to get started how to use custom code and so on thank you very much yeah. for, for this thing thanks so much Giannis. yeah thanks for having me on here